Coming up, another check of our Weather on the Ones forecast. And our Andrew Schmertz tells us about some artwork in Soho that can keep people guessing. Andrew? Sharon, coming up next, Vincent Van Gogh. I think not. Monet? It's a phonet. We'll have the story of some great masterpieces of fake art coming up next on New York One News All Morning. If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, then an art museum in Soho has reached new heights of sincerity. New York One's Andrew Schmertz joins us once again from the International Imaginary Museum with more. Andrew? Sharon, you are never going to get this close to a $70 million painting, and if this Monet was real, that's about how much it would be worth. It would be behind glass. It would probably be in a vault. Certainly wouldn't be hanging here at 560 Broadway, which is the address for the International Imaginary Museum. Joining us once again is the founder of the museum, Bruno Schmidt. Tell us a little bit about the detective work that goes into determining that this Monet is not the real thing. I must tell you, I have a great respect for the original. And a second original cannot be created. But by view, it would be very, very hard to see the difference. Uh, I would be a liar if I tell you, is this 100% exactly as the original? No, these artists, they try as hard as possible to get as close to the original as possible. Can you point out a specific example of what is different? Well, the, the brush stroke, the texture of the color is the same, but there might be slight, slight differences. But to make sure to find out whether it's a fake or a real thing, you would have to take it to the laboratory. Now. These often hang in museums, collectors buy them. How, how do these fakes uh, get by people? Well, uh, there is always a funny story behind it. Um, the middleman that tries to sell it always invents a story uh, like uh, blue bloody Scots people who own a small castle. Now they have to, they have to renovate their, their castle, so they need money and they have to sell a painting. Instead of four millions, they offer it for 700,000. And people often buy the stories. That's exactly These what artists important. obviously are really very talented people, but they, a lot of them are criminals. Um, they used to be criminals, uh, but now they are legalized through our um, idea. We have paintings here that were actually on display in European museums in order to replace uh, the original that was undergoing a restoration, for instance, or even uh, in museums where they were on display in museums uh, how, unknown that how, it's a fake. How do museums and collectors feel when they find out it's a fake? Embarrassed? Embarrassed and tell me, believe me, very, very angry. No wonder if they paid uh, millions for a uh, fake. And you have convinced some of these artists to put this in a museum here. Well, actually, we want to have to, the, to make this our kind of art ac um, accessible to the public. And first of all, who can afford to, in nowadays to pay millions and millions for a painting? Bruno Schmidt, thank you very much from the International Imaginary Museum. In fact. Some of the people who own the originals actually, we understand, lock the originals away in vaults, don't let anybody see it. And sometimes they'll hire people to paint fakes and hang the fakes, or they'll buy the fakes, so they'll show off those instead. Andrew Schmertz, New York One.